Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. I'm Asa and I'm super excited because it's new tool day. I finally received an enclosure I bought almost four months ago from Prusa for my i3 Mark 3S Plus. Shipping took ages. I understand it's because they had difficulty sourcing electronic components due to all supply chain issues, but it's finally here. So today I'm gonna talk about enclosures and why you might want one. I'm gonna do an unboxing, assemble, do some test prints, and finally give a full review of my thoughts. So why get an enclosure at all? It's all about temperature control and temperature stability. Better temperature control in an enclosure can prevent warping, it can prevent draft, which would cause issues in printing nylon. It can enable you to print in polycarbonate composite blends, ASA, and a bunch of other advanced materials I'm really excited to check out, especially ASA, because that's me. I'm, I'm Asa. There's a really good guide on Prusa's website that goes over common materials and how they might be impacted by an enclosure. There's a number of other side benefits I'm really looking forward to. I do some woodworking in my shop, so I'm constantly cleaning a layer of dust off my printer, and enclosure should help with this quite a bit. As you know, printers can outgas annoying odors and even dangerous fumes, and enclosure can help mitigate this. I'm thinking about actually venting to atmosphere by drilling a hole through my foundation. Get in the comments if you wanna see that. It would be a pretty exciting project. An enclosure also can help with noise suppression. This isn't super important for me at the moment since my printer is in my shop and my shop is in my basement, but this would be really helpful if I ever move my printer into my home office. I also got an optional filtration system that should filter out ultrafine particles when printing in materials like ASA. So it's finally time. I'm gonna unbox this, assemble it, and do some test prints. Most important, comes with refills of bears. Oh. They're fine. Got a cheat sheet that I cut through. So we've got the main enclosure components here, which is the metal components, the acrylic sheets, and fasteners. Then I've got my optional advanced filtration system, and I even forgot that I bought optional white LED strips because it's been so long since I ordered. What I don't see is an instructions booklet, so I'll get them from Prusa's website. All right, it's finally build time. I'll take a few minutes to talk about the packaging first. Prusa ships a premium product, and their packaging has the same attention to detail. The organization, the clear labeling, and the protection of the enclosure is excellent. I wasn't home when it was delivered and it sat outside for a few hours in the rain, but I was never worried that the enclosure or the optional add-ons would get damaged. Overall, the build was pretty straightforward. I spent about four hours assembling the enclosure and another one to two hours assembling the optional add-ons. My only complaint is that I wished I had looked ahead at the instructions for the optional filter and the white LED strips. It would have saved time if I installed these while assembling the enclosure itself, instead of finishing the enclosure and moving on to the options. If you assembled your own Prusa, this should be a piece of cake. If you bought an assembled kit, I recommend you take a look at the instructions. I think you can do it. Prusa's instructions are extremely detailed. They tell you how to tighten every nut and even how to do the cable routing.
I've done about a dozen test prints now, so it's time for my review. First, I'll tell you what I don't like about the Prusa enclosure. Then, I'll explain what I love, and finally, give my recommendation if I think you should consider buying one. And please, feel free to comment if you have any questions or suggestions for me. I'd love to hear from you. The biggest drawback is the cost. At $350, this is an expensive enclosure, and that's before shipping and any optional add-ons. Prusa knows that you can get a grow tent or use a cardboard box, so they're really trying to target the prosumer or small businesses with this enclosure. I happen to think it's worth it, and I'll talk about that when I list the positives, but at almost $500 shipped, there's a lot of tools you could get instead of a Prusa enclosure. Shipment delays are still a problem. If you order a Prusa enclosure today, the website says it'll take over two months to arrive, and I have a suspicion it would take even longer than that. I think when I ordered it, it said it was something like six to eight weeks for delivery. I waited a lot longer than that. During fall, I even exchanged some emails with Prusa's customer service. They explained the delay was two electronic components. While I was building this, I had the realization there are no electronic components. It's a fancy box. The only electronics are to power the filtration system and the LEDs. I really wish Prusa had shipped the enclosure first and then shipped the optional filtration system and LEDs after. The final drawback is the size and weight. Now, there isn't a whole lot you can do about the size. The weight is a result of using steel, which I actually like. This is part of the high quality construction and materials. But if space is a premium in your shop or you plan on moving in the near future, you might want to seriously consider just going for a grow tent or a simple cardboard box, something that's easier to move around. Those are really my only complaints, and other than the cost, they're pretty minor. As you can tell, I'm actually really excited about this enclosure, and I have a lot more positive things to say. It starts with the overall build quality, materials, and fit and finish, which are all great. I appreciate that it's made out of steel. This lets me attach stuff to it using magnets. There's also attachment points all over the enclosure. This will allow me to build DIY mounts for things like filament or tools. I'm really looking forward to some of those projects. It's definitely sturdy. Prusa says you can stack four or five of these on top of each other to give you an idea of how strong it is. Like I mentioned during my review of the packaging, Prusa has an exceptional attention to detail. You see this in the location of the power supply for the LEDs and the filtration system, and on the on-off switches for those accessories, there's a nice little indicator light to show you that they're on. This will help when I'm wearing hearing protection while doing woodworking. I might not know if I've accidentally left the filter running. This is minor, but I really do like the aesthetics. I think the enclosure looks great, and I love the acrylic on black color scheme. Overall, my test prints went really well. I had one failure when I used PLA, but the ABS and ASA test prints came out extremely well. I should mention I have no affiliation with Prusa. This definitely is not a sponsored video. I'm an enthusiast. I really like Prusa's products other than the long wait times. So finally, what's my conclusion? Do I think you should buy a Prusa enclosure? Well, yes and no. I'm really pleased with my purchase. I'm glad I bought it, but I recognized it's expensive and you'll have to wait quite a while for it to show up. If I had to do it again, I probably would just start with a grow tent or a cardboard box to see how it improved the quality of my prints, to mess around with ABS and ASA, but I'm really pleased that I have it. So in the end, yes, I recommend the Prusa enclosure for purchase. Ultimately, the enclosure plus the filtration system is the big value for me, so I'm not worried about fumes and particles when printing in advanced materials. Well, that about does it. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Please hit the subscribe button if you like the content of this video. I have a lot planned about 3D printing, building, crafting, and making. Hit the subscribe button so you don't miss it. I'll see you in the next video.